Fiona. Oh, wondered if you'd notice me. Oh. You know how it is. Now then, do you want to hear my news? It'll keep. I have lunch like you wouldn't believe, and Fiona and George the Younger are coming. Isn't he with you? No, I have to go and collect him. Oh, well, I shall take Victoria and Coriolan and tell them my news since nobody else is interested. Come on. Now, first of all, Daddy got into a big aeroplane, and I went flying all the way over Seems very pleased with life. Yes, I just wish I was. Why? What's wrong? When did this come? About a week ago. Does George know yet? No, I've been putting off telling him. Well, you'll have to let him know. Yeah, I'm afraid I will. Well, you're not going to tell him now. Well, not before lunch. I shall pick my moment. Well, don't be long. So he's back. Who? The bishop. Who? Wasn't he in the vet? Uh, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, he's grand. He's grand. Not a bother on him. Huh? Come on, I'll give you a bit of grub, boy. Good, come on, good. Oh. Hiya, Father. Come on, man. Oh. Off day. Yeah. <laughs> well, didn't he look some fine fettle? And why wouldn't he be, huh? Mm. Well, he's ready for tomorrow evening, eh? Well, uh... I don't think we ought to run him, Father. Why wouldn't we? Well, it's just... I'm just stating my opinion. I don't think he ought to run. <laughs> Do I give you this today? You're a real trier. You never give up. <laughs> Look, Father, I'm only saying... Do you think I don't know you by now? Talking down the dog's chances in order to put up the price, eh? <laughs> I'm not playing a blind bit of notes to anything you say, because I've heard it all before. Now, listen, Father. You can't take and any... anyway, didn't he prove himself in the only place that matters on the track? That may well be, but I don't think he's fit to run tomorrow. <laughs> no. I sure isn't the vet that's have given the dog a clean bill of health. Vet? No. What vet? The vet. He was in there since Wednesday. He's just back this minute. Since Wednesday? Did you not tell him? Uh, well, uh, it was only a uh, lick of precaution, you know. He was a bit off his groove. But, but, but why, why wasn't I informed? Well, I didn't want to worry you, know. What do you mean, worry me? What reason in the world would I have to be worried? Well, you see, Father, you can't take any chances with a, a highly bred animal like the bishop here, because, you know, they, they can catch almost anything. I had a right to be told, and I expect to be told in the future. Oh. Fair enough, Father. He's to run, then. Didn't the vet pass him fit? Yes, but then he runs, and I want to hear no more about it. Come here to me, you. You have a mouth like a bucket on you. Do you know that? Well, hasn't he a right to know? And he owned the dog. If he wants to know anything about the dog, I can tell him. Well, yes, maybe so. But I know there's something that you're not telling him. There's something about this that doesn't meet the eye. Wait, wait, wait. Who's your man? Come on. Mm -hmm. Some stranger to me. What's going on, Billy? Shh. I'll tell you later. We haven't had any news yet, love. No. Right, anything else you want? Oh, listen, I have to go now. OK, right, I'll talk to you again. Bye, Judy Pet. Talking to Derry, were we? Just a quick call. Mary, you never made a quick call in your life. Oh, very smart and very mean, too, begrudging the odd call to the poor unfortunate child. You'd swear she was in a refugee camp, the way you're talking. She's in a posh boarding school, being waited on hand and foot. I met Paul. Oh, how was he? Cool. Was Terry with him? No, no. Yeah, but I suppose they're still together. I didn't ask, Mary. I didn't ask. Oh, excellent. Oh, mm. Delicious. Do you know this was my favourite? I think you mentioned it once mm. or twice. Queen of puddings. I remember it from school. I mean, we had it too in <clears throat> school, but uh, what we called it was um, toenail pudding. Why on earth? Now, you see, they had jam on top, and then they sprinkled grated coconut, so it looked just like a toenail clipping. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that memory with us, George. Fiona, want some more? No, thanks, Shirley. Shouldn't you save some for Corey? Please, where is Corey? He's in the stables, I guess. Oh, I'll go and get him, Shirley. No, no, sit down. You'll come back when he's hungry. I was going to go anyway. You coming, George? OK, sure, yeah. I've, uh, I've got something to show you. Oh. Excuse us. Ah, that was a splendid lunch and a splendid homecoming. The absolute fatted calf. Oh, I'm <laughs> so glad. 
I've been feeling so awful about those terrible things I said to you. Nonsense. No, it isn't nonsense. I had no right to say such cruel things. No, you were perfectly right. I had been leading a thoroughly useless and pampered existence. I am very grateful to you for having pointed it out to me. No, I was horrible. And you're so good. Oh, there, there. Come on, you bring the coffee. I have something I want to show you. Yes? Ah. Mm. Oh, your paycheck. A small thing but my own. Well, the amount doesn't matter. I'm so proud of you. Well, you'll be even prouder when I tell you my news. Oh, yes, tell me your news. Well, as I was in London, I thought that I'd pay a, a visit to my old publisher. Mm, just a courtesy call, no expectations. But it turns out that they are planning a major new work on bird migration, which will collate and supersede all previous publications on the subject. Wow. <laughs> I thought you'd be pleased. Now... Who do you think they've chosen to illustrate the Irish section? Really? Yes, I mean, I'm so pleased. I thought, you know, after my old editor retired, but, well, I didn't think I'd be invited anymore. But who do you think they've appointed as the new editor? Who? Dibble. Who's Dibble? Dr. Julia Dibble. Absolute tops in her field. A legend. And she wants you. Yes, and isn't it wonderful? And I have you to thank for it all. Oh, nonsense. How can you say that? Oh, yes. You know, I feel like a new man. Well, I was perfectly happy with the old one. <laughs> Daisy! Daisy! What are you doing here? I brought your coat. You forgot it. What coat? Pussy's on you. Is hey. it cold? You freeze. Pussy's on you. And the other mother's ever cold. Well, I'm sorry, but I didn't want you getting your death. Close it up. I don't care about Pussy's mother. Do you want a lift? Well... I'm going that way. Oh, that'd be great. Thanks. Baby. Oh, are you coming? No, I'm going to Stephen's friends. Since when? I promised. All right, but I want you home by five, okay? Maybe. Thanks. Doesn't want to be seen getting a lift with the teacher. I suppose. His friends might give him a hard time. He was annoyed with me for coming. It's a very match of wage, but don't worry, he's a very bright kid. Is he really? Don't you know? Well, I worry about him sometimes. Don't. It's rather a lot, isn't it? It's 3,600. Yes, I know. I never dreamt. Well, it stated two weeks ago. Why didn't you tell me? Well, I thought I'd look into it first, see if there wasn't some mistake. And there isn't? Afraid not. Apparently, it costs about 600 pounds a month to keep a horse in training, and that's for six months. Well, we've had that horse a year. I know. The first six months was paid by Plum. Who, who's Plum? Well, you remember. Mummy's friend. The one who gave us the horse. I thought he was going to pay all the training bills. But I rang Mummy and it seems I was wrong. Let's see. Well, I asked her if she'd pay, but she's absolutely stony. And there's no point asking Daddy since all that trouble with the names. Here, well, well, wait a minute. What, what are you talking about? What names? At Lloyd's. Daddy was a name, so he lost his shirt and has been frightfully mean ever since. Uh... And Daddy doesn't like Plum. Why not? Because Plum fancies Mummy. Well, there's one thing for sure. We can't keep him in training. No. I thought we might sell him. Well, there's only one snag there. Who in his right mind is going to buy him? Well, he's not very good at racing, but he'd make a wonderful hunter. Would he? Oh, yes. Anyway, I've asked the trainer to look out for a buyer. Good. How much do you think we'd get? Oh, quite a lot. Could be as much as 2,000. That only leaves 1,600. And we'd easily raise that. How? Well, I thought I'd get a job. Did you start at our feet? No, I've started straight away now after the, after the lunch. Well, what were you doing? Oh, no, Biddy, I tell you, I was at that planter, and I tell you, it's in a terrible state, whoever was at it the last. And by the way, while we're on the subject, what, what were you up to? Making your dinner. No, 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 no. before that, the, the man with the, with the measuring tape. Oh, the architect. Oh, well, he was measuring up the place, and he's going to draw plans for the open farm. What? You know, like we talked about it. We didn't, we didn't talk about architects, did we? Going to look into it. Oh, we didn't agree anything about an architect. Look, but he was only looking at the place. There's no commitment. Why, why, why didn't you tell me that when I asked you first? I didn't want to. Not in front of Dinny. 
I'll tell you something, it's some great ideas. I know, Betty, I don't know about some of the ideas that architects have. Well, he thinks we should put the animal compounds in the field above the house here. Where, where we have the celery? No, no, above that. We put the coffee shop where the celery was. Oh, Betty, look, come on, what, what do you mean? What do you mean, coffee shop? Look, if we're going to have busloads of people coming here, we're going to have to have a coffee shop. And if we have a coffee shop, we're going to have toilets. Then we're going to have to resurface the drive in the yard and convert the packing shed into a fruit and vegetable shop. Holy God. And souvenirs. Look at me. Is it going to be an open farm or, or, or a shop and centre, huh? Ah, look at Miley. It mightn't amount to anything, but it could be the makings of us. Oh, no. I don't know. Alison, what are we going to tell my father? Well, we won't tell him. Oh, come on, Billy. We'll have to tell him. Well, at least not until we both decide. And we won't do anything unless we're both agreed. <laughs>